So hello, welcome. Another Friday, another video. Um, this is a case of a, uh, a large, very wide central incisor where um, essentially we had to apically gauge or we had to sort of measure how wide the apical uh, diameter was prior to obturating and also we had quite a significant difficulty in drying the canal and as we get on with the case in the video I'll explain everything that's happened today but overall you can see um, a super 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 nice result. So the first portion of this root canal was essentially making sure that the restorations were adequate because of course if you cannot get adequate restorations on a tooth there's no point doing the uh, the root canal and the patient actually had come in and complained that the uh, the, the the tooth um, had stains in it and, and obviously when we take a, an x-ray it also had symptoms we took the x-ray and you can see this really really large radiolucency so all I'm doing here is just removing the old composite fillings and I am probably being a little bit rough here with the uh, with the rose head but I know that the tooth is completely necrotic so I don't need to worry about that at all and you know it's just a just a simple simple case of uh, removing all of the fillings and also removing all of the undermined enamel I don't know if you just saw there a few seconds ago we remove the composite filling and um, the sort of distal aspect of the incised ledge there was quite a large overhang so it was probably in the patient's best interest or the tooth's best interest just to remove the overhang because it can just fracture really really easily and essentially what I like to do is like to throw the composite in overfill it and then shape it afterwards I feel like you've got a little bit more control over um, a filling when you overfill it and uh, and, and you can kind of just shape it the way you want. And, and, and now I'm just using these, uh, this, this white stone just to polish the tooth up. And it looks really, really nice. All the stains are gone. And of course, what we're gonna do now is we're ready for the root canal. We're gonna place rubber dam. And I don't care what anybody says, no rubber dam, no root canal, okay? That's really, really important, mainly for patient safety and also to stop the ingress of bacteria um, uh, uh, getting inside the tooth. So it's super, super, super really important. You know, sometimes we get patients in for the root canals and they just don't like the, the rubber dam and we have to say to them, sorry, the, uh, the, 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 the treatment can't be carried out. So we're gonna do um, a nice little minimal access here. You gotta be really careful with inside the teeth that you don't um, uh, sort of orientate your burr in the wrong way and sort of go out the buckle side of it. So just make sure you're, um, uh, you're orientating your fast handpiece burr correctly. And unusually in this case, I'm just using an orifice opener just to open up the the, uh, the, the sort of access cavity here. I don't often do this. And, and now I am quite confident that I can take a working length once the access is opened up. Uh, because I know from the x-ray, this canal is humongous. Now in this case, I was using a size 25 K file and it just wasn't large enough. So what I like to do is pull out these extra large uh, 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 hand files. This one in this case is a, is a size 31 millimeter K file. And that just gives me a little bit of latitude for me to hook the apex locator up and, um, and take a, an accurate working length. And sometimes with really, really wide canals, they can be really, really difficult to get a, uh, an accurate working length. Um, it can be for a number of reasons, okay? Some would argue maybe a size 10 is probably too thin to uh, correctly gauge um, the, the working length. And, and sometimes if you've got a size 10 in uh, this uh, quite a large canal and the apex locator is, is just wild everywhere, it might be a good idea to maybe step up the diameter of the file, maybe up to a 15 or even a 20. And this has been shown to um, give you more accurate readings. Another difficulty, of course, is that you've got no sort of grip around the, the, the tooth. So trying to keep the tooth in position Position and moving the rubber stopper into position can be quite challenging. But if you've got a steady hand, as most dentists do, you know, I think you'd be absolutely fine. And in this case, we found that the working length is 25. Now, I suppose the way we could have done this with the size 25K file, but there would have been a bit more difficult for me to 
um, get the K file all the way up to the hilt and then place the apex locator on. So we know that the diameter of this uh, tooth is massive and you'll notice I'm going straight for the GP point. I am not um, filing this tooth at all. So I'm pushing the GP point to length. I can see that it is going way past the working length of 25. So we know that the diameter of this GP point is wider than the diameter at the end of the hole in the, in the tooth. So I'm going to use these cutter cutters. So we know it's 25 point. We know that it's about a millimeter too long. So I'm going to use this gutter cutter to cut the GP point at 35. So it takes away about a millimeter of this GP point. And I am pushing this GP point again to length. And this is called apical gauging. So this is using a GP point and a cutter that cuts the GP point accurately to check to see how wide it is. And again, we pull it out it's going too far. So we know 35 is also too small for the apical diameter of the apical, uh, uh, the, the, the orifice in this tooth. So I'm just kind of like sort of eyeballing it here. So going up to 40 probably isn't correct. 45, that's another millimeter. I'm going to cut it again, and then I'm going to fit this GP to length. I'm going to see if um, when we fit it to length, when we get that kind of snugness or that sort of resistance, how um, long is that? And we're just going to fit it to length here. And then we're going to take it out and then we're just going to just, just snugly fit it because you want it to snugly fit because when you come to obturate it, you don't want to push it out the end and you can see that it's just ever so slightly. So it's a 0.5 millimeter um, too long. And we find out that when we cut it to 50, it's another 0.5 millimeter off the GP point. We fit this nicely to length and we're you know we're being quite firm with the snugness sort of fit here we're pushing the gp to length we're giving it a good push through we're going to pull it out and we can see that now uh, a size 50 is at 25 so we know the apical diameter of this tooth is 50 and um we're gonna just very gently push the gp point to length and then we're gonna just feel for tug back just to make sure that it's you know, nice and snugly at length. And then we take a comfort radiograph. And you can see here, it's perfect. These are the kind of comfort radiographs you want to see day in, day out. So really, really, really nice. And um, so we're ready to obturate. So we're gonna remove the GP points and then we're gonna place it in this Style Italiano um, disinfecting pot. So make sure you disinfect your GPs. Remember, they're not sterile. And then we're going to find uh, we're going to do our final irrigation protocol. And in my case, I like to use ultrasonic tips just to activate that irrigant and get them all into the nooks and crannies. And again, lots and lots of irrigants, lots and lots of activation. Remember, we've got loads of time because we didn't shape. And then we're going to just aspirate the uh, the the excess. Um, irrigant from the tooth and now we're going to attempt to dry it so in this case um i you know i i didn't really think that i'd have a problem with drying this tooth but slowly over time i was using these um 25 um diameter uh paper points and as i pull them out they're just sopping wet and also you can see that the the sort of color of these gp points are kind of yellow so it's kind of like hustle exudate you know and you can see here with the picture how many GP points I actually used to dry this canal. And I was getting kind of halfway through this um, uh, this, this sort of point in the canal and think uh, in the root canal procedure and thinking, am I going to be able to dress this tooth? Um, I'm sorry, am I going to be able to dry this tooth, or, or am I going to have to dress it with um, calcium hydroxide and bring the patient back? But luckily, we managed to get a dry canal, and that's good for us from a cost-effective point of view, and it's also good for the patient. Um, and then we're gonna just use a bioceramic sealer with a single comb technique to fill uh, the, uh, the, to obturate the tooth. And I think in this case, you know, don't be shy with the bioceramic sealer. Don't forget the, the GP point is probably rattling around in that canal there. So you're gonna make sure you use a suitable sealer as well. And then you're just gonna push the GP point to length, super, 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 super uh, gentle. So you don't push too much of the GP, um, too much of the 
uh, by ceramic and also the GP point because remember the 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 apical diameter is very wide so you don't want to push too hard and then you're just going to very very gently um, burn it off with a heated plugger and um, again firm but not too firm uh, 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 compaction with a Mach 2 plugger and um, yeah we're going to take uh, a little x-ray and as you can see here looks nice as always as i always like to say looks super nice we have got a little bit of extrusion on this um on this uh, x-ray i'm not massively concerned about extrusion again there's a there's a huge debate in endodontics about sealer puffs and and, and extruding bias um, sealers out there i think in a way i'm using a biceramic sealer so it's very very biocompatible um, some people like to say that bioceramic sealers are always resorbed um, when they're extruded. They're not. That's a really, really important distinction to make. Um, and other people also like to say that bioceramic sealers, when they're extruded at the end, they um, sort of promote healing. I don't know the evidence of that, if I'm honest with you. I think um, on balance, what I like to do is confine the sealer to the, uh, the, the root canal. But if it a little bit squirts at the end, then, you know, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it. And there you go. Another root canal another live video if you like these videos and you're new here please subscribe please like and also if you have any criticisms if you have any questions if you think you have done something different let's spark a debate let's talk and let's you know let's let's talk about endo which is what we all we all love and uh, i'll see you next friday in the next video okay have a nice day and happy endoing and i'll see you when i see you bye bye